Okay folks, today we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting and eventually a little bit of repair on our GE side-by-side -side refrigerator and freezer. And today we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting as far as the ice maker is concerned. Now, you've had a situation where you, you put your, your glass underneath the uh, dispenser and then you go ahead and try to activate it. Note, we're sitting on either cubed or crushed and we go ahead and try to activate the ice maker and here's what we hear listen okay that doesn't sound good uh... it sounds like something's binding up and, and we need to figure out why there's two main causes uh... that i would immediately try to troubleshoot and let's look at the first one which may be fairly common with this type of uh, freezer which is the the auger may have been frozen in the back so let's check it out okay folks we've got our ice tray out and if you notice uh, the the auger assembly which is right here you know it's got a significant buildup of ice here so what we're going to want to do is basically empty out all the ice and then we're going to want to thaw this area particularly around here to make sure that this thing which obviously cannot turn freely you know we, we've got some issues there on uh, the thing being iced over so let's go ahead and do that now okay folks now we've had a chance to uh, thaw everything out and notice the auger turns pretty freely now so that may be all that you need to do is just kind of get all the ice out of there thaw everything out but there may be something worse at work and uh, that's actually what we're going to cover today um, you may have some parts that might come out of your ice maker as you're dispensing ice and I'll show you a couple of those here in a second for example if you're dispensing uh, ice and all of a sudden you see something like this come into your glass or even uh, something that is completely round looks like a washer or a piece of white plastic you may have something a little bit worse uh, at play not to worry it's not a difficult repair it's only a seven dollar item whereas if you have to replace this entire thing you're really looking at about hundred fifty dollars so it's a relatively easy repair and we're going to cover that uh... the first thing we want to make sure is that we make sure that this entire assembly here has spent about thirty minutes out in room temperature because we are going to work with some of the plastic and it could potentially break if it's not at room temperature so we'll make sure that we set that out for at least 30 minutes and we'll also want to make sure we have the right tools all right here's the tools that we're looking at basically we're looking at a set of pliers uh, or channel locks like I have here but you can use regular uh, slip joint pliers we're also looking at a Phillips screwdriver the next one over two flat tip screwdrivers and also uh, two putty knives you can probably get away with just one putty knife, but it'll make it a little bit easier with two, and we'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, folks, one other thing we want to do before we actually start working on uh, repairing our ice tray is we need to make sure that the uh, ice maker's turned off. Otherwise, we'll have a little bit of an icy surprise when we come back. So the first thing we want to do is take out this top tray here, and I'll expose the uh, ice maker in the back. Now, depending on your model, you'll either have like I do. Let's zoom in a little so we can see it. Let's try to. Okay. There's a rocker switch here. All right. There's the on position, and there's the off. It'll keep basically this arm from coming out, and that automatically stops the ice maker. You may also have an up and down rocker switch here whichever is applicable for your model uh, just make sure you turn the ice maker off okay folks we're going to go ahead and pick up uh, our disassembly here of the uh, ice tray first thing we want to do is take off the shield we'll need your Phillips screwdriver for that on too hard. Don't lose the screw. We'll put it over here off to the side. Next thing we want to do is on the back side, there's two screws right here. 
that we're going to want to take off. Again, remember, make sure you let this thing get to room temperature for at least 30 minutes. So some of the plastic parts we're going to be messing around with, we don't want them to break unnecessarily because they're too cold. This has been sitting for almost an hour, so should not be a problem. We'll put these screws right here in the tray. Now, at this point, we should be able to take this piece off right here. So all we need to do is get it over the lip of this edge and then pull it down, making sure that it's free of all components. Now, a little bit wet here on the top. Uh, one other thing we'll want to do, just to make this a little bit easier to deal with, um, we're going to want to go ahead and, and take this lever right here. And we don't need to take it completely off, that is, take it off at this end. But what we're going to do is loosen up the screw here. Okay. And what that's going to allow us to do is move it just enough to get it out of the way so this isn't going to interfere and what I would recommend is you leave it hanging kind of right about there and go ahead and put the screw back in so you know where it goes you're not going to lose it and here comes the hardest part of the whole thing it's not hard because it's hard hard it's it's just hard because it's uh, requires a little bit of patience so what we have to do in order to get this piece out right here what we're going to need to do is get this tab and this tab both to press at the same time this is why I recommended that we use two um, putty knives you can use one but two makes it a lot easier to deal with if you have two I recommend two Alright, now be careful that you don't accidentally break this because it is plastic and what we're going to want to do is you can't lift up from here. See that's kind of problematic because there's a plastic, here let's show you, there's a clear plastic piece here and you can't lift up from that. But what you can do is for example to get under here and just kind of jimmy it up a little bit again it's going to take some patience let's get this side again There we go. Alright, so now we have both tabs depressed. We might even be able to make this a little bit easier by coming in right here with our uh, screwdriver. And just try to separate a little bit slowly. Don't take this too tight. And slowly but surely, we want to get this. That's it. Notice tab here, tab here, clear these white. Now, if you got in a rush and you did this while this thing was still very cold, you ran the risk of breaking these white pieces. So you don't want to do that. All right. Now at this point, we're ready to. We can. Uh, this is just hanging free at this point. Now. Because I told you that there are situations whereby this component right here could have fallen out, which is exactly what happened to mine, or you could have this washer fall out, or both of them, or this is a real telltale sign. The lips on this plastic may also come out. If any of those happen, you're going to have to replace this. So I can pull it straight out because you'll notice they're gone All right. the washer should be right here okay and this clip 
should be right on top of it holding it in, but it's not. All right, All right let's uh, take a quick break. We're going to change the batteries and we'll be right back. All right, folks, we've uh, got our auger separated. No reason to take this off. You can just leave it hanging there for now. One of the things we want to look at, um, you know, this, this piece here came with the original uh, freezer. And the freezer is about six years old. One of the things that happens, I don't know if you can tell, but look at the sides of, of where it goes through. You may see some elongation. It might even be a slight crack, which is what we have here. We probably should replace this, but since we don't have a replacement part today, we'll go ahead and reassemble it as is. And then at a later time, we'll do another video uh, showing the replacement of this piece, which is uh, pretty straightforward. All right. So what we're going to want to do is put this off to the side for a moment. And this piece right here, you'll notice if you take an inspection of it, we see that all the, the, the white lips on this nut are all broken off. And the reason for that is pretty straightforward. There was too much force, there was ice jamming the thing up, and it eventually broke off. So we're going to want to replace this piece right here. No reason to take any of these pieces off. We're just going to take this off. So we're going to grab a set of channel locks here. All right. Now you can use regular, I mean this is kind of overkill, but you can use regular uh, small slip joint pliers. Just something to get on here and get a nice good grip. Now remember, this is left-handed thread. So you're going to go the opposite of what you expect. You normally would expect to go this way to, to tighten it, all right? But in fact, that should loosen it, and sure enough, there we are. All right? So we're going to go ahead and loosen this up. Take it all the way off. By the way, this is the only repair other than possibly, I mean, it'll probably work for a couple more years, and that's all I care about for now. But this piece over here might be uh, maybe 20, 25, 30 bucks. Uh, but this piece right here, believe it or not, is $7. The whole assembly, if you replace it, would be $150. So, you know, be, be mindful of that. All right, your temptation is to screw it this way. you got to go the opposite. So it's a left-handed thread, which means go in the opposite direction of what's expected. All right. And then we'll... Do a quick, tighten it up, nothing outrageous, it's just tighten it down so it'll stay put, okay? So this is good to go, all right? So now what we need to do is put this through there, and that's basically how it's going to go, all right, like that. Now we can... At this point, we should have enough here to first, we'll put our washer on. By the way, you don't need to replace this washer unless the one that was on there is bent, corroded, or just unserviceable. But if you still have this washer, go ahead and use it. And especially this. This is pretty beefy right here. If, if this thing cracked, you've got bigger problems than you realize. So this is probably still going to be good if it's still present. If not, you'll have to order them, and they come in these blue bags over here, uh, regular genuine GE part bags, and you can look those online. For example, that piece right there uh, is the part number for the actual uh, nylon washer. So, uh, in my former line of work, we used to call these things circlips. Oddly enough, GE calls these things um, eclips. You know, you can kind of see you look at it sort of sort of like the EU E letter whatever whatever you want to call it get it started all right remember there's there's a little channel that it fits in and what we're going to want to do is keep it level and then press with a screwdriver or even a channel locks and keep going until it's all the way in the groove so a little bit of pressure there we go now, you're almost there, but notice this piece right here is not in the channel. 
So we're going to want to go to that little extra. There it is. And it clicked right into place. And then you're good to go. This should rotate freely. The washer should rotate freely. And in this case, there's a little bit of slop in there. Not a huge amount, but a little bit of slop. And this should move freely. Alright, we're going to bring this back up here like it was before. Just like we had it before. See that? So this clear plastic right here is just going to set with gravity. Now, one thing you're going to notice is all the edges will line up right here. And this piece right here will free float in here. It's not like it's clamped in or anything. It kind of free floats in there. So, what we'll want to do is take this whole piece and then stick it back in the hole where the auger was originally in and then slowly bring it down making sure that these little ears fit in the slots All right. make sure everything is good before you push one last piece make sure this is free floating here see it is Okay. these ears are in the slots right here and then the last piece you'll do push it boom lock it into place good to go and reassembly is pretty much a reverse of uh, assembly so we're going to want to take this piece and we'll move it out just a little so we can get that arm back in right there so all you got to do is put it in the slot it's got some free float there and then we'll take this all right we know this is going to sit right here in this little channel and of course we're going to need to take our screw off before we do anything so we kept it there so we can lo lose track of our screw okay let's pull that back out put this back in the channel all right, like so, and make sure that we haven't gotten out of the slot down here. So we'll put our screw back in. not look right. So what we may have to do is pull it out. Now we do the real world stuff here. So we'll check our work and make sure that everything is as it should be. Yeah, actually it was right. Just didn't look like it was setting in there properly but since we didn't pull it off of the the rod there's really only one way it can go on and there it is we want to tighten this down but not over tighten it because this is ultimately held in a nylon or plastic um, receptacle down here you don't want to strip it out all right does it work yes it does and the one thing that we want to Actually, there is one thing that's not right. Now I discovered it. All right, we're going to take this part one more time. Here's what we found was missing. If you look, there's a little tiny set of notches right here. Okay, this clip should be between the forward and the rear notches. So that's going to require you to kind of jiggle it and then go just past it. There we go, right there. All right, there. Now, once we've done that, now it sits perfect. See, so it'll stay, once we have it fastened, it'll stay within a very narrow range of operation. All right, so let's always make sure that before we get this reassembled, we do it right. Okay. Tighten this back down. All right. Now, our 
our rod here should have some positive tension. Well, it doesn't look like we have any. So what we're going to need to do is swing this around and put our clip on the back side. So now watch. See? Now we have positive tension. So as long as you don't remove this, all you're going to have to do is swing that clip around and, and loop it around the back side. You'll be good to go. All right. Again, in reverse order, we're going to put our two screws over here. I'll put those back on. And this will hold our little yellow plastic piece uh, secure. Well, actually, no. We probably need to put this on first. All right. The only caution there. is when you're putting this on, remember, this piece right here has to clear, all right? So what we're going to want to do is, there, let's try it this way. There we go. All right, so here's what I did. Try to keep it about flat and level with this surface here, but what you're going to have is this piece right here is going to have to get over that first lip. So pull it just enough to get over the lip, boom, until now everything lines up. So we're going to get our holes lined up right here. There we go. And we're going to grab our screws. We'll just get this one started. We'll get the second one started. There we go. Don't tighten the first one all the way down until you get this one close. There we go. Hand tight. Don't over torque it. Okay. Last piece, it's the ice, ice guard to keep it from overflowing. All right. So we got these two lips right here. Those are going to need to set. There's a little recess. See if you can see that in between the yellow plastic and the white plastic. They'll set right in there. There we go. And what we're going to want to do is just tighten this down hand tight, and that should do it. All right, you may want to put a little pressure on the back to keep it from slipping as you tighten it down. There we go. All right. So let's do a quick function check. Does the auger turn freely? It sure does. No issues there. I can just free float it and turn it, no problem. All right. Does this lever freely engage and disengage? Yes, it does. So our ice maker should be good to go. Uh, the last thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and turn our ice maker back on reinsert this into the refrigerator or the freezer that is and wait however long it takes a day or so to uh, fill this up with ice and then do a quick function check to make sure um, that everything works properly and and we haven't missed anything and it's all back the way we uh, know it should be uh, keep watching on the video site for future videos on other tr troubleshooting procedures for uh, GE uh, refrigerators and freezers.